In this video, I will demonstrate a few additional settings that you can modify when working with the brush tool in Photoshop. They include pressure for opacity, flow, airbrush, smoothing, pressure for size, and symmetry. They are not specifically required for our course because some of them require the use of a tablet and a stylus, uh, but if you're interested, please give these a shot. If you'd like to follow along, you can jump over to Photoshop. I'm going to clear out what I have here as playing around. And before we get started, you need to make sure that you have something painted on your workspace. And so I'm going to make a bright green, make it bigger, a bright green squiggle so that you can see how the additional paint brush strokes that we're going to make are going to interact with other colors. And so once you make your first squiggle, change the color of your brush. Also, make sure that you have a brush selected that you'd like to work with. I have my brush size set to 125, and I'm just going to use the same brush so that you can, can see how it compares. Um, my brush is set to 125 just so you can see it on the screen. And the color I chose is bright pink because that will contrast to the green. The last thing that we need to do before we can get started is you need to clear out the settings that are on your uh, options bar. So make sure that your blending mode is set to normal, your opacity is set to 100%. Then there are four settings that may or may not be checked. They are opacity for size, symmetry, airbrush, and opacity, um, sorry, pressure for opacity and pressure for size. Uh, make sure these are all turned off. You do not want them to be dark. We don't want to adjust two settings at the same time. That allows us to see what the settings of one tool at a time does. The first one that we can play around with is pressure for opacity. It's right next to the opacity slider. That's not a coincidence. And then I have a stylus in my hand. I'm going to uncheck that. So before we start, I'm just going to make a squiggle. As I make this squiggle, the paintbrush stroke is 100% opaque. Everywhere that I've applied pink, you can't see through the pink. You don't see green bleeding through. Now on the edges you can because the shape of the brush doesn't go solid to the edge. But everywhere the pink has been painted, the colors are not blending together. Now, if I select the, the option for pressure for opacity, as I draw my brush stroke, if I press lightly as I paint, you can see through the pink that I'm painting and it blends and creates like a purpley color with the green. And if I push hard, it will be completely opaque. Now this brush is a custom brush that I installed. And by default, pressure also increases or decreases the size or the diameter of the brush. And that's why when it's opaque, it's thinner. And when, I'm sorry, when it's transparent, it's thinner. And when it's opaque, it's thicker. Let's turn that off. Flow, the best way to think about flow is think about a pen that's running out of ink. If there's no ink in it and you try to brush, it takes forever kind of scratching to try to get ink to come out. And so you're going to you're going to scratch and paint for a while before ink finally flows out of the pen. And if I put it at 100%, which is the polar opposite of empty, as I paint, I have as much ink as I need. It's right at my fingertips and I will always be able to paint with ink. And so what I usually do is I'll leave it somewhere in the middle unless I find that what I'm painting is applying too much color or not enough color, and then flow is an option for that. Let's um, let's erase some of the stuff that we did so that we have some more. Oh, I went too far, so do edit, redo, uh, so that we can play around with some more options. Airbrush is pretty cool because it works like a spray can paint, um, a, a can of spray paint. So if you click, it only applies a little, but if you press and hold the nozzle of the paintbrush, it will eventually fill all the way in. And so you can have lots of different variations. And so as you're drawing your lines, if you stay still for a second, it will fill in more. And if you let it go, it won't. And so you can use this on with um, the stylus. So I'm on the stylus now. You can also use this option if you're just using your trackpad or your mouse. Let's undo until we get back to the green line. Smoothing affects um, the way that the brush is applied. And so you can play around with this, but in general, I always just leave the smoothing at 100%. And so if we leave it at zero, you can see that it kind of is jerky and different things like that. And if you apply smoothing, it will take longer to apply the stroke sometimes, but it tries to be smoother in the way that it fills in. But the one that I like the best is pressure for size. And 
I'm going to show you this even though this brush has it built in anyway, but you can activate pressure by size on almost any brush, um, and it only works with a stylus. So the diameter of my brush is 125. We've already established that, and if I push really hard, I will get a diameter that is 125, and it's consistent as I'm drawing. But if I press very lightly, I can get a thinner line and then press heavier to get a thicker line and then let go until it trails off. And so as you're painting, if you needed to fill in an area and you didn't want as much um, to be filled in, you could use lighter brush strokes to get thinner amounts of your brush to be applied. Now the last one is just plain fun. It's called symmetry. So I'm gonna undo until, well, I'll do Command A and X. When you select symmetry, you have to select a type of symmetry. So let's do vertical. Uh, when you do vertical symmetry, uh, you have a line, an access line, and anything you paint will be mirrored across it. And so if I painted a heart on the right-hand side here, I could create a heart in one full swoop. Let's undo and let's change it to a different type of symmetry. Let's do a circle of symmetry. You can move this circle wherever you want. I'll leave it here, except to the location. And now on my trackpad, I'll just start drawing and you'll see what will happen. It will help you draw a pattern across the axis of a circle. And it will always mirror itself across the access point, which is the circle. So let's do a, a horizontal one. And so now anything I do below or above this hor horizon line uh, or access line will be mirrored. And so if I draw a circle down here, it will draw a circle on the top. If I draw mountains on the top, it'll draw the reflection of the mountains in the bottom. It's just kind of fun and cool, um, especially if you're trying to draw something that does have symmetry.